What's going on everybody? It's your boy Shogi from Shook Earth Media and today we are back with Tales of the Walking Dead episode 5 and it's called Devon and this episode again yet another terrible episode. A lot of goofy things going on, some ridiculous situations, a mystery that doesn't really pay off in the end so it's another fail in my book so this whole show I don't know maybe next week will be okay. I'm not holding out any hope for it. That's just my overall opinion on it. But uh, if you guys like Walking Dead content, definitely hit the sub button and the like button. I hope to hear your opinions in the comment section down below. If you like the show, let me know. You know, no disrespect. If you like it, that's totally awesome. I'm happy for you. But let's just jump right into the episode. So uh, I will say just something positive out, out front. You know, I like the whole mystery at the core, the fact that there is a mystery. I like that there's something to unravel. Um, that's something that I think this show really could have used in a lot of other episodes is, you know, th something that we want to find out. We want to see what the answer is. And uh, the, the, the rest of the episodes were lacking in that. This episode, we get a little bit of a mystery. And most of the episode, I'm honestly, like, curious to find out what it is. And it's not until we get to the end that I realize how ridiculous it is. <laughs> but, you know, I... I I, I like that there's a mystery there, so that's a positive. Uh, this character here, I will say the actor is good. I think he does a decent job with the script. Uh, but I must say that the script is lacking. <laughs> um, so he wakes up in the middle of the woods. It's very convenient uh, that he forgets everything except for the fact that he is missing a leg. That's the only thing he remembers. <laughs> he doesn't remember anything about what's happening. Um, these flashback scenes are kind of cool, but I don't even really know what the purpose is when we look at the end. I don't know what these drawings are. We're going to cover spoilers in this, so uh, they apparently had all these kids kidnapped by the end, we find out. We don't really get a good reason why, um, but I don't know why they have drawings up of them. I don't know, maybe these are missing posters or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so I mean, some of these close-ups, I'm liking the cutting, the way they're editing it together. The horror movie vibes, I like it at the start. Um, but he, yeah, like I said, he, he, he forgets everything. Except he also doesn't forget that he's in a zombie apocalypse. So he's not like surprised to see... <laughs> it's very selective amnesia, which is... It, it's a trope. It's, a, it's something that is always going to be a part of stories like this. So I can accept it to a degree. Um, it does annoy me. But, you know, I, I, I wouldn't write the whole episode off because of that. And like I said, it's that's the only thing that lets this mystery happen. But he takes off his prosthetic leg and <laughs> starts beating her with it. A few things. Okay, one, she was trying to bite you this whole time. So if if you if you didn't kill her, if if you didn't kill her by now and she didn't bite you yet, I think you're good, man. <laughs> you were passed out. She was right behind you. There's some kind of, like, this chemical stuff. We'll get back to the circumstances behind how this zombie died, because it's really kind of dumb. But uh, they, they got, like, this weird fleshy wound that makes it so that she can't bite, I guess. Um, so she wasn't able to bite, but he still thinks that he's got to bash her over the head with his prosthetic. It's like, bro, don't you need that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So he doesn't remember anything except for the fact that he, he doesn't hesitate to take his prosthetic off. So he remembers that, uh, you know, so uh, he's handcuffed to her and, all, you know, at this point, I'm like, I'm curious what's going on. And we got uh, he's getting chased by people. They're looking for him because of this. But again, the convenient amnesia. So he's like bewildered about it. And then she starts talking. <laughs> And here it's like, if, if she did it once, if she was one time like, you're a murderer, like the hallucination thing, that's fine. But to go this whole, this whole episode, like several minutes, like half the episode, this zombie's talking, it's really goofy. It's again going out in, into the La La Land ridiculousness. That was episode two. In episode two, they justify it by, it was just a hallucination. So they're doing that same thing here. And, like, you can only go so far with the hallucinations before the show isn't grounded anymore. <laughs> and we're way past that point, if I'm being honest. So, yeah, the uh, I, I really hate the, the talking zombie. 
I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, I cannot stand it. Also, he bashes this thing in the head, but she, she could still walk around. What the fuck, dude? You didn't finish the job. You're gonna potentially break your prosthetic leg. You might as well finish it off, finish her off. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we get these flashbacks a little bit as we go. And what were they? What the hell were they thinking? You guys see the the film grain effects and the audio is made mixed to sound like old microphones and old speakers. What were they thinking? That only makes sense if you're looking at like if, if in the film itself, the the footage is from a film camera. There's. <laughs> I don't know, they could have just done like a toned down color thing. They didn't even need to do anything. Like we know this is a flashback. You don't need any kind of visual signifier that this is a flashback. We don't need the film grain effects. We don't need the audio that makes it hard to hear what they're saying. I had to turn on subtitles because it's harder to hear what they're saying because the fucking audio is mixed to sound bad. What were they thinking? Okay, so I guess he's a newcomer to this area, and he gets saved by them, and they help him out. Okay, great. Apparently, they're French, and they're in Maine, which is like, okay, I didn't know that there was French colonies in Maine. The music is like this jazzy stuff, so I thought they were going for New Orleans for a second. <laughs> it's just really weird tone. I don't know, is jazz a Maine thing, too? Is that like a French thing? I thought jazz was like more of an American thing, but... I I don't know. Maybe I'm off base with that. I don't I don't really know. The music is is over the top is what I'm getting at. We'll get at a little bit more of these flashbacks later. But yeah, I mean the flashbacks are okay, but look, not only is she talking, she's fucking the zombie is pointing, telling him where to go and telling him which house number to go at. <laughs> if he doesn't remember, how is he hallucinating this zombie telling him shit? I'm, I'm getting I'm getting triggered guys getting very triggered so he goes into this house where he was being saved and stuff he finds the scene of the crime we'll get back to this later it's a very very silly situation in my opinion um but he's looking around he's got a lantern which is like where did he get the match <laughs> again i'm overthinking it probably and then he finally like cuts her hand off and frees himself from the thing um which is kind of funny because in, in the flashback later, he just like does a screwdriver and is able to get the kid out of the handcuffs. So I don't get why he couldn't do that. I mean, there's a toolbox there. <laughs> he was able to unlock the handcuffs, no problem, when it's the kid. But when it's him, he has to resort to cutting her arm off, <laughs> which is like, uh, okay. Uh, here we get a flashback dinner scene. And, I mean, these scenes are okay. We're just introducing the son character. And the, there's this budding relationship going on. And, I mean, the, I don't know. The chemistry is okay. It's just, like, hard to really buy into it. Um, but, yeah, and then we go more flashbacks. He's learning how to play piano. We're having all these romantic moments. And I, I just really couldn't care less, if I'm being honest. Um uh, I mean, I'm still intrigued, like, what goes wrong here. I'm still intrigued about what's going on. Uh, I'm like, there has to be some sort of mystery to pay this off, right? And here he's in the bedroom that he was sleeping in. He, he th There's a Band-Aid there, all of that. He's, you, you know, just getting his bearings. I think he rests a little bit. And here we get another silly flashback where uh <laughs> he's in the same room he's resting and this is where we get the information like oh they're french they're in uh, maine i guess the the guy davos or whatever his name is devon is going to montreal for some reason that they don't actually specify ever uh, so i don't know what's going on with that but of course we get some ridiculous you know political stuff shoved in here uh as as is the norm nowadays where uh, I get, they're talking about the rule of law, which is like, again, he, he gets threatened with uh, execution for his supposed crimes and stuff later. So I get the theme that they're going for. It's, it's just kind of sloppy. Uh, he's like, laws still work. It's the zombie apocalypse, dude. There's no fucking government. There's no police. <laughs> what do you mean? The laws, there aren't even any laws. They're just like pages in a history book at this point. 
laws mean nothing without enforcement. So there's nothing, nobody there to enforce it. There's nobody there to pass the laws. And he throws in like, a, oh, the, the laws work, but the people who pass the laws don't. <laughs> it's like that. First of all, it's a really clunky phrase. <laughs> And second of all, of course they don't, because they don't exist anymore at this point in the apocalypse, okay? There are no politicians, there's no government, there's no elections, dude, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, I get it, generic, everybody hates politicians. We we can all agree on that, I suppose. Uh, but then the French ladies are like, I forget this is America sometimes. And, and then uh, it's, you have to get the American hating stuff in there, too. And the, and the French were like, this was our land until the British decided it wasn't. First of all, these this the stuff we're talking about happened way before either of these people were born. You could go to France. You can you can move there if you want. <laughs> Secondly, these people they could have moved to Canada, where there's a bunch of French people, to the point where it's like an official language. <laughs> okay, so all, all that notwithstanding, it doesn't really matter. It was just like really obnoxious, you know, American hating stuff, and uh, you know I, I get sick of that. I really get sick of that, uh, especially in a in a time in an apocalypse where there are no countries anymore it's like so, like what is even the point of discussing it and the guy and the and the main guy is like oh i can relate to that or something but uh it's not the same situation <laughs> they were colonizers too by the way so back into this episode he goes to the basement and there's a, a zombie down here and then it turns out that one the lady is still alive and i'm like okay where the fuck has she been He's just been wandering around her house all night. How did he not run into her? Or Whatever. I just need to stop thinking about this show. <laughs> because it's really dumb. Uh, this is like the one scene that I think the chemistry genuinely works. And it's kind of it's kind of sweet. You know, I, I will give this scene a thumbs up. It's okay. Uh, the guy, you know, brings her strawberries. And then he makes jokes about how she's going to ruin the strawberries by putting them in the salad. It's kind of funny. It's kind of cute. I like it. I'll give him the, the thumbs up for this scene, you know? I, I have to say some positive things here because otherwise I'm just a hater. And I'm not a hater, guys, okay? I Don't call me a hater. Um, so, yeah, the, the, this scene's okay. And then we follow it up with the uh, kind of potential execution scene. And I like the aesthetics of this, you know, the whole tying him to something and you know, the burning at the stake almost. It, I, I like the aesthetic of it, like I said. Um, I will say we get to hear more of the 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 French people. And I don't know, somebody who's French would have to tell me, the accents come off as like over the top. So I don't know if these people actually speak it or not, or, or what. Um, I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, again, I don't know the accent all that well. It just comes off as a little over the top. And also, they can all speak English when they were talking about earlier how they forgot it was America. So wouldn't they just all be speaking French all the time? And uh, yeah, I mean, I get when they're talking to him, he doesn't speak French, so they have to speak English for him. But when they're speaking to each other, it should be in French, right? Am I overthinking it? Probably. <laughs> but that's what we do on this channel, okay, guys? Um, so yeah, it's this. They're they're blaming him for something... Uh, that he actually kind of did. So he did actually kind of do what he's accused of to an extent. Um, it's just they, they are missing out some of the finer details. Um, so they have... <laughs> this is the dumbest fucking part. Uh, okay, it's a pretty dumb episode. So there's competition for that. This van, they got him in... They're going to throw him in this van and then crush the van. And it's like, dude... First of all, they have zombies on the ground already. So if they don't want to waste bullets or they don't want to physically attack him for whatever reason, they have zombies right there. <laughs> but there's a vehicle, a perfectly fine vehicle that they might be able to fix up. You know, I, I don't know if they can really get gasoline at this point, but there's no reason to get rid of this vehicle. You know, I don't know. Maybe you could use it for a purpose. Uh, you know, I don't know. But anyways, they throw him in there. And then they're going to crush it with this, like, caterpillar, uh, you know, <laughs> fucking thing. And it's very silly. And uh, it, it just looks absolutely ridiculous. So I don't know why they have to go this way to execute him. And it just made me laugh. And, like, why would they just, why wouldn't they just kill the zombies that are here, too? They're, the zombies aren't even trying to bite anybody. 
Like, I don't understand that part either. So it's it, it's really goofy. And then he remembers that one of the kids is still alive. You know, again, convenient amnesia. But convenient amnesia is just... A, 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 it's a thing in literature you just have to accept sometimes. Um, so, you know, I, I won't harp on that too much. It wouldn't bother me if the rest of the story was good. But, uh, yeah, and then there's there's a fight breaks out because the Nora person that he likes uh, that doesn't seem to care for him very much <laughs> uh, is willing to have him killed. Uh, she stops it or tries to stop it. Basically, a fight breaks out, and then uh, the, the son character slips away, and then he follows him apparently all night because it goes from night to day like that. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. And he didn't get caught or anything. He was, Is he really that sneaky of a guy? He's not very nimble. <laughs> He's missing a leg, okay. And, uh, I mean, we got the this thing here. And basically, I don't know... I don't know exactly what the motivation is for the older kid here. I think it's like a Mika situation. He's like, I want to spare them from this world. And it's like, I don't know. I've seen your, I've seen your village. You got nice houses. They don't seem to be fighting anybody right now there doesn't seem to be any warfare going on um it's to the point where they were willing to bring somebody in the the davon guy they're willing to bring him in fix him up help him out they're willing to do all these things so i don't think that their society is constantly under threat because if it was they wouldn't have been as accepting of a newcomer so i don't think that their life is really that bad i mean comparatively in the apocalypse they have a, a stable place to live. They have a community. They seem to be clean. They seem to be well-fed. I mean, he's got strawberries and shit like that. Is it really that bad? <laughs> so I don't even really understand the motivations here. You know, I get the whole trying to spare the children thing. But honestly, that would work better, like, during the outbreak. If you want to do that storyline, it's, it's much better in a more desperate situation. Uh, but whatever, they got a creepy kid, and they, they want to do the Mika thing again. Again, going back to the well and repeating themselves. But then we get the real flashback where he discovers children in the basement because he heard them through the vents. A couple things. How did he not miss the fact that there were fucking kids in the basement? I mean, they must have been going down. The, the, the kids didn't have their mouths duct taped, so they've been making noise, almost certainly. And the, the women... Why would they let a stranger in their house if they're doing this? <laughs> okay, so that's dumb. Well, how, how did he not notice? And, and all, all of that. So, like, it's so dumb. And also, why would they even... If their whole thing is, like, we want to spare people from the apocalypse, wouldn't they just kill this guy or let him die? Like, why even save him? If that's their ideology at this point. And also, how did the fucking mom, who's so concerned about her daughter... Not know that he was tied up in the fucking basement. And also, like, all these people, they, they, they're they mad at, at Dav, Davon, or I keep forgetting his fucking name because it doesn't matter. But Davon is it, it, supposedly this murderer he killed all these children. The children are missing. Oh, no, we got to find the children. That's the whole villager's motivation here, and that's why they, they didn't kill him right away. They want to find out where the kids are. So you're telling me these kids were locked in the basement for weeks or months on end and nobody noticed until they supposedly died? Why Why are they only concerned about the kids after the thing with fucking Devon? And also, like, where did the kid go? Like, I, I get that the, the kid's brother was there, but he frees the kid, the kid runs away. And then they have a fight, and then uh, the ki the kid just ends up getting kidnapped again. Why wouldn't he run? I don't know, bro. And then they end up in the uh, he 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 has the handcuffs because like I said, he easily got them off of the kid, put them in his pocket. He's got the handcuffs. He his idea of fixing the situation is handcuffing himself to the women the, the, to the woman who was attacking him. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> I mean, if you want to uh, try to hook her to something so that, to immobilize her, that's one thing. To <laughs> you, If somebody's attacking you, the last thing you want to do is handcuff yourself to them, especially if you don't have the fucking key to unlock yourself later. 
It's so stupid. And then also, like, the, the, the face thing that we were talking about, there's some kind of weird chemical on the ground. I don't know what that chemical is, if they said what it was. All I'm saying is if there was a chemical that dangerous that it would burn your face off, I don't maybe it's bleach or something, I don't know what the fuck it is. Why would you just leave it in the middle of the garage where it could easily be tripped over, something could be dropped in it, you could easily step in it. So many fucking things could go wrong. Why is it just there? It's really it's really fucking stupid, dude. It's really stupid. And like uh I don't know the people who are going after Devon or whatever, it, all they would have to do is go to the basement right now and there's a fucking dead child on uh, like hooked in the basement. And uh, the, he's, the body's still there when Devon comes back later. So he's been there this whole time. It's probably stinking up a storm, dude. It probably fucking reeks. How did nobody find the body? Like they investigated the scene of the crime, right? So I'm guessing that they did find the body in the basement and that's why they're so mad at Devon here. But I don't understand how Nora didn't know that this was going on in her own house, right? I mean, I think she lives there permanently, so how did she not know about the children in the basement before Devon finds out about it? Uh, but yeah, this is the chemical here. She trips in it and it burns her face off and then she dies, I guess. And then the kid comes in, and he's freaking out. Uh, so he did kind of murder the lady, but it was, like, somewhat a self-defense situation, except he <laughs> hooking himself to her is, like, the exact opposite of self-defense. I don't know what he was trying to achieve with that. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And then he's carrying her. Um, I mean, I don't know. Would he be able to hold all that weight with the prosthetic? I don't know. I, that's a question I, I would uh, need to ask a doctor or something. But, uh, yeah, and then we get more flashbacks and, like, oh, yeah, their relationship was so great. <laughs> Whatever. And then we get the confrontation. And, I mean, the confrontation, everything plays out okay. Um, one kind of dumb thing is the kid shows two of the kids' bodies. And they're just, like, buried under, <laughs> like, a thing of wood with leaves over top of it to make it look hidden. Which is like, first of all, wouldn't you put a little bit more effort in so that's harder to find? Second of all, why wouldn't you take their brains out so that they don't make noise? Because we already know that they they could crawl out. They could, they're lurkers or whatever. If they're lurkers, they could just crawl out if somebody walks by. They could be making noise, alert people to the fact that there's a buried body right there. <laughs> if you're trying to cover your tracks, you fucking take out the brain. But maybe they couldn't, maybe he couldn't do it. I don't know, he's okay with killing kids, but not okay with killing the zombified version. I don't know, maybe it is a Mika thing after all. Also, I just want to point out that the killer kid in this scene has no accent to speak of whatsoever. When everybody else has French accents, it stands out a lot, so it's a little bit odd. The, the, the villagers come running after he yells, and then they realize the truth of what happened, that it was the kid that killed the, the kids, and then uh, he tried... Devon tries to throw it in their face, like, would you regret it, yada yada, and, uh, it's like, you did kill that lady, though, <laughs> I mean, I get it was, like, somewhat self-defense, it was an accident, you didn't do it on purpose, but you did do what they were accused of, <laughs> so nobody brings that up, nobody brings up the dead lady, all they care about is the kids, which I think is funny, and then, uh, that's pretty much it, we get a preview for next week, and it looks... As ridiculous as this episode, they got talking ghosts and zombies and, like, supernatural shit is what they want us to think it is based on the commercial. So, another ridiculous episode next week, too, and this whole season was a complete fail. And that's just my opinion on it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I think we covered pretty much everything this episode. I hope to see you guys in the next video. With that, it's been your boy, Shogi. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.